Would you like to take something that looks like this, tear it down and build it back up into this? Well, if so, you're in the right place. Many of us have aspirations of building a rental property because of the added benefits, such as low maintenance going forward, but unless you've built another property in your life, the learning curve can be very steep. In this video, I'll share five things you should know when building a rental property. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share some of the costs associated with these items. It might shock you. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. We just acquired our newest eight unit apartment building in downtown Toronto. I've done a few of these now and it's exciting each time, but I'd be lying if I said there isn't something new that comes up on every single project. So just know that each project is unique, especially if you're doing what's called infill, where you're taking down an existing home and building up a new one. With each project, you gain new insights and experience that will prepare you for future challenges. In order to try and expedite your journey and help you avoid some of those challenges, let's dive into the five things you should know. Number five, trees. A lot of municipalities have regulations around the removal or damaging of trees. In the city of Toronto, for instance, they are nuts about their trees. I've seen projects get stalled or in some cases get canceled because there are too many trees that will be affected by a potential development. When you're looking at the property, whether it's an existing property or you're planning to build new, it's a good idea to have an arborist report done so that you know what you're up against when it comes to the trees. In a lot of municipalities, an arborist report will have to accompany your building submission any Anyway, so these are costs you'll have to incur regardless. For those of you thinking you can just hire a midnight lumberjack to come in and cut down trees, there can be significant fines for doing so. The city of Toronto, for instance, threatens up to $100,000 a tree. So go about it in the legal way or be prepared to pay. Number four, deposits. There are all kinds of deposits that municipalities will require when you're building a new rental property. You may have to give a deposit for a tree. You may need to leave a deposit for road damage. There are deposits for landscaping and site work requirements. All of these are usually returned once you've completed your work and closed off your building permits. Now, the good news is that if you're using construction financing, in some situations, municipalities will allow you to use a credit through your financial institution versus coming up with all that cash. But this is not always the case, and some of these deposits can be significant. On our recent project, we had to put up $60,000 for two large trees on the property to make sure that we didn't damage them. Like I said, the city of Toronto is nuts about their trees. Find out from your local municipality what deposits you'll need to put up when you build a new rental property. Number three, environmental and geotechnical inspections. When you're building a new property, even if there's been an existing property sitting on the same lot for decades, you may be required to perform an environmental inspection and a geotechnical inspection. The environmental inspection looks at if there's anything in the radius of your property that could have an effect on the value of your asset. For instance, if there was an old oil tank in your property and it leaked for 10 years and oil made its way into the soil below, you would be required to remediate or remove all of that contaminated soil before proceeding with your new build. This could cause significant delays and could cost a lot of money. A geotechnical inspection tells you what capacity the soil has for bearing. Certain soils are better than others for bearing. Sand versus clay will have a different bearing amount, for instance. If the soil cannot support your development, you may need to bring in different soil or you may need to reduce the weight of your project. These are not things you wanna find out halfway through a new development. Number two, shoring. As we continue to build more and more properties and as municipalities create incentives for redeveloping areas where there are already municipal services such as schools, fire stations, and libraries, the chance of you taking down an existing property and putting up a new one in its place increase significantly. Depending on how far away you are from your neighbor's property, you may need to provide shoring. Shoring ensures that the soil that is beneath your neighbor's property does not get removed during excavation, causing structural damage or collapse. Shoring can be extremely expensive depending on the size and scope of the project. So when you're looking at a potential site, keep an eye out on the proximity to the neighboring properties as this will have an effect on the cost of the project and the timelines. And the number one thing you should know when building a rental property is 
beware of development charges. This was a rude awakening for me the first time I found out about development charges. Development charges are something that municipalities use as an alternative to raising property taxes on homeowners. Raising property taxes is bad for getting reelected, but raising development charges affects only a small portion of the population. So this is one lever that municipalities can pull in order to generate revenue from their tax base. Development charges are usually based per unit that you create in a building. So if you're going from a single family dwelling to a triplex, you're adding two additional units. So your development charges will be based on the fact that you're adding two units. Depending on the size of those units is usually how the fees are calculated. On our latest project, our development charges made up one third of our overall construction budget, so they can be significant. Check with your municipality to see if they have development charges and find out what those fees are. They are usually readily available for you to find out how much they are. As promised, I wanted to share some of the costs associated with these items. Having an arborist report completed and a tree protection plan in place will run you anywhere from about $3,000 to $5,000. Deposits can vary wildly. A road damage deposit can be as little as $2,000, whereas a landscaping or site servicing deposit could be as high as a couple hundred thousand dollars depending on the site. A phase one environmental inspection should run you about $3,000 and a geotechnical inspection requires drilling into the soil, so these will start at around $10,000. Shoring is usually priced per linear foot, but don't be surprised to see costs at around $1,000 per linear foot. In the City of Toronto, development charges for 2022 are $38,000 for a one bedroom unit and $77,000 for a two plus bedroom. And people wonder why property is becoming so expensive. And to top it off, the City of Toronto is proposing a 50% increase to development charges in 2023. I think it's time to start developing elsewhere. If you've got questions for me around building a rental property or anything else real estate related, leave those in the comments section below. If you're interested in my real estate investing masterclass or in my development course that will be coming out soon, check out my website at darrenvaros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.